So uh, now we're going to continue. This is the third video in the series on uh, detection from arrays. If you haven't watched the first two, pause this one, go back and get through those two on the basic framework for binary hypothesis detectors. And then the, this example I just talked about. Now we're coming back to the single sensor for narrow band signals. This is the same model we've used all uh, semester for looking at one of the models we've seen. We're saying now we have a framework to talk about. We're saying I'm either looking for is there just noise there or is there signal plus noise? And I'm going to assume that I know something about the noise variance. So it's a complex normal. Again, remember this means I've got both the real and imaginary parts are themselves real Gaussians. So I have these two real Gaussians, each of which has half the power in it. So sigma n squared over 2. And that I'm assuming these two pieces are independent. And that the noise itself is also independent of the signal, where again, I assume I know the power, but not anything about the phase. So I know this is uh, power is sigma a squared, the expected power of the signal. And so uh, I want to go through and say, well, I want to write out more clearly what the conditional probabilities are. These are in general terms, but it, it's worth taking this a little further because what we'll see is that we know if, if I go to write out f of x given h0, there would be a bunch of normalization constants that, that are not that interesting. And then knowing that the real and imaginary parts are equal, I can write, well, the Gaussian would be minus like nr squared over 2 times the variance of the real part, which is sigma n squared over 2. And I'd have a similar exponential for the imaginary part. Right? And so when I put all this together using properties of exponentials, I'd have some normalization constant times the expected value of minus, I'd add these two things, and I squared over sigma n squared. And so while well, we say, what's nr squared plus ni squared? Well, practically, it's the norm or the magnitude of that complex number squared, right? It's like saying, if I think of the real and imaginary axis, the only thing that determines how likely the noise is is the length squared, right? This would be the length of n. So we're saying the length of n squared, the noise vector squared, the further it is from the origin, the less and less likely it becomes. And I can go through a same exer similar exercise recognizing, to find this, I'd recognize, uh, let me give myself a little more space first. Uh, no, I don't want to do that at all. Where did that thing go? There we go. Move that down a little bit. If I think about the sum here, this would tell me that like the real part of x would be the sum of the real part of a and the real part of noise of n. But both of these are real Gaussians, so if I add two real Gaussians, I'll add their means, which are both zero, and then add their variances. So under the, the h1 case, this will still be Gaussian, but it now it will have the uh, the new variance that's the sum of the variances. So this starts to look like that example three, if we think about it in the uh, the reading I gave from the K book, which is it's uh, the case where I've got two cases with the same mean but different variances I'm trying to decide. I go through the same process with all this and I'll end up that I have some normalizing constant times an exponential that again comes down to the, the magnitude squared of the observed data of x squared this should have been x all along, I guess. Uh, x squared over sigma a squared plus sigma n squared. So they both have what this is actually becomes an exponential random variable. Uh, and, and we'll talk a little, we can talk a little more in class of how that happens. But basically it's saying that when I'm looking at the power from a single sensor to make my decision, or when I'm looking at a single sensor to make my decision, all I have to go on is the power. Is, is, is looking at the power, and so we say that 
if we define z is equal to the magnitude of that complex x squared, which is based on the power of the energy, we say this is a sufficient statistic, that it has all the information I need to make a decision just looking at the power of this, one, of this number. So taking the, the magnitude squared and not the phase. So now let's think about our, uh, our probability of detection in false alarm. Right? We'd say, well, well, well what, I guess I should first show you some typical examples of this. So if I went and looked at, uh, the, these are the two exponentials. If I have just the noise or the noise given h1, it turns out this blue one will have a higher mean because it goes out further. So I'm looking, I'm comparing these two different PDFs and I'm trying to say where on this thing do I want to put my detection? Right? Where's my decision threshold? Say above here or above there? Depending on what false alarm I want, what uh, probability of detection will I get? And so let's go back and say, well, let, let's find the equation for the false alarm. It's pretty clear from that picture I showed you a second ago. I should have, let me just go back there. That the threshold is going to be, if, if I'm above something, I'll choose H1. If I'm below, I'll choose H0, right? Because H0 has much more of its energy, or much more of its area, down here towards the origin. Whereas I go to larger values of my, my uh, this would actually be of magnitude x, I would get the larger the values of x squared here would be a uh, higher probability for H1 that the signal is there. So the probability of false alarm would be equal to the integral from whatever threshold I pick to infinity of, of an, the exponential PDF. So that would be, uh, for the null case, that would be the exponential of minus magnitude of x squared over sigma n squared. Uh, and the normalization constant turns out to be 1 over sigma n squared for this. This is the, the exponential PDF with the norm of n squared. Uh, and this would be the derivative of the, the detector variable x squared. And now I'm realizing this is why I, we should have used the z here. Let's say we're going to make this change of variables where z is the power observed. And then that's still 1 over six, this minus z squared sigma n squared dz. Right, so when I do this integral, I get a minus this 1 over n squared comes up. Ah, at this point, it's no longer z squared. Sorry, I'm not having a good math day. I appreciate you being patient. This would be e to the minus z over sigma n squared. Evaluated between gamma, the threshold, and infinity. Right, and when I do that, well, when this goes to infinity, this becomes zero. And then I subtract out the lower limit, and I'm left with e to the minus gamma over sigma n squared. So the probability of false alarm will be the threshold divided by the noise power, e to the minus that. Right, so this is the uh, probability that z is uh, greater than or equal to gamma for an exponential PDF, which is what we get for the power for a simple complex number. And so we could use this. If I knew what threshold is, I could tell you what the probability of false alarm is. If I knew what the uh, probability of false alarm I wanted is, I could solve this for, for the threshold. And don't worry, you'll get a chance to do that in the class problem. Uh, the other piece we want, though, is, is the probability of detection, which, again, is also based on an exponential, just with a different uh, variance. So uh, let me uh, get this set up, save a little time, just a second. All right, so again, for under the, the case when the signal is present, I again have a complex Gaussian by adding them with a new variance, same uh, mean, zero, because it's the sum of the means. But when I add two Gaussians, I add their variances. So here for the complex case, sigma a squared plus sigma n squared, which means the real and imaginary parts, which again are independent, are each real Gaussians. If I look at the real part of the imaginary part, zero mean with sigma a squared plus sigma n squared over two, Right, I have half the power in each one of these, so altogether, the power is that. 
going through the same type of argument, this tells me again that that the uh, the power z equal to the magnitude of x squared is a sufficient statistic again. And so I'm going to again get, if I go through the same argument with the, the Gaussians and the exponentials, I'll again get uh, that the power given h1 will be an exponential again, but with a different mean, so a different uh, scale factor for the exponential. So I have e to the minus, again, this z po power divided by sigma a squared plus sigma n squared. And so by having a larger denominator, it means I get to bigger values of z for the same exponential, which is what I saw here, right? That when the, the denominator of that exponential gets larger, it stretches this curve out more and makes it shorter at zero. So it, the power has to be positive, but it stretches it out more, giving us regions up here, right, where we can, for this part of the, if we decide H1 up in this region, we have a lot of probability for the, the good, a lot of good probability detection, and, and weaker for the, uh, the other case, right? So again, reminding us how that looks graphically. If I chose my threshold, say about here, my probability of false alarm would be the area under the H0 curve, right? This would be my false alarm, whereas everything under the good curve, all this area, all the way out here, right, all this area would be my probability detection. And so I can use the probability of false alarm using the the uh, curve I s showed you a minute ago, if I want this to be less than or equal to alpha, I can just keep moving this threshold down, down, down until picking up more and more red area until I hit alpha, at which point I'll know what my PD is. Uh, but we can uh, solve that explicitly here. So using this energy detector, we had the PDF just a second ago, I can can look at this and say I can, I can solve for my probability detector detection here by doing that same integral. which is the integral from gamma to infinity of f of z given h1. And again, I, I don't even need to go through the whole integral. We've seen this story a zillion times with exponentials. This will be minus e to the minus z over, right? This will come up into the denominator because it's it's what came down from the chain rule when I, if I took the derivative. And this will be from gamma to infinity as z goes to infinity, this becomes e to the negative infinity, which is zero, and I'm just left with the same expression, but a different scaling factor in the denominator here. Right, so this will be my probability of detection. So as I vary the threshold, I, this is what I'll get, or as I choose the threshold with that name and Pearson approach, uh, this, is, this is what I'll find. And now I could actually plot both of these probabilities uh, on a graph like this. I could say this is the probability for each value. This would actually should actually probably say gamma here. That I, I want to say if I choose this to be gamma, what's my probability? Let me get my thing out of the way here for a minute. Right, this is the probability that x is bigger than, again this should say gamma. So the probability x is bigger than gamma for each hypothesis. And so if I want to say I've got some threshold of false alarms, this is the alpha. I want my false alarms to be less than that. I'm going to trace it back to here to hit this point. This will be my PFA. Reaching the threshold, this will tell me what the gamma should be. And then this up here at that same gamma would tell me what's my probability of detection. Now when I drew this example, uh, this one does not have a very dramatic change between the two. Right? It said, well, I'd still have a relatively low PD. If I had sigma a squared gets bigger and bigger, these lines will separate further. And in fact, one of the important results is that if we think about the sensor SNR, the SNR would be equal to the signal power sigma a squared over sigma n squared is the only thing controlling performance. 
if I want to to get better uh, probability detection for the same constraint on PFA, like I say I want it to be 5% or something, whatever it is, call it alpha, I need the SNR to increase. I need to find a way to get that signal power under A uh, or under H1 to be la larger relative to the noise background to get a better ability to get better detection for the same rate of false alarm. And that sets us up, even though we've talked a lot about scalars here, that sets us up, we'll see in class, uh, for how the vector case plays out. But I've, I've, this is a plenty long enough video, so I'm going to stop here. All right, so this is the background story on, on the exponentials. We'll see more in class how we use it and how this relates to the case when, rather than thinking of a single sensor, I then think of the whole array.